Welcome to the Redirect, Regroup, Refocus podcast with your host, life coach, Jeff Relliford. This podcast is designed for those who wish to change their inner self in order to maximize outward potential. So come redirect, regroup, and refocus with your number one life coach, Jeff Relliford. Hello, 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 everybody. What to do? It's your boy, Life Coach Jeff, coming to you again with another episode of the Redirect Regroup Focus Podcast. I got my boy, Ryan Reed, my cuzzo, Mr. VNO. VNO, what you know? That is, let me get it in. (laughs) And we got Miss Jennifer Williams here as well. Now, hold on, it's going to get hot in here. So I got to be ready. Okay, so this is the deal, everybody. As you look at the title of this uh, podcast episode, it's the Business Networking Event episode because my friend here, Jennifer Williams, has put on a wonderful business networking event. Now, it is wonderful to us because all these lovely people here in the room and sitting outside, we are in a suite here, but we got kind of done wrong. I don't mind saying it. These people don't know me. I don't know them. Who give a damn, right? But this Maybe is we the- should close the door first. <laughs> They can hear us. It's okay. They can hear us. It's okay. They don't know what we're doing over here, y'all. But uh, with this episode, what we want to do is we want to talk about starting a business in Northwest Indiana and some kind of the trials that we got to go ahead and we got to face with. I hear something. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> But I, this is just normal people. We deal with the, we deal with lag. We deal with issues, problems, blah, 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 all that other mess. What we do is we record and we run through it all. This is the, this is how I go when you live tape. I do it Monday through Thursdays with Dope Living and we doing it right now. So here we go. So all right, y'all, listen, we're going to kick it off. So Miss Jennifer Williams, how are you today? Um, <laughs> you lie, you lie. Given the circumstances, I'm mm-hmm. actually feeling a lot better. Okay. Um, it started out as a crappy day. Mm-hmm. Probably dropped a bunch of f bombs. Probably wanted to choke a bunch of people. Just a smidgen. You were standing in my face. I think I wanted to mm-hmm. kind of like land on you a little bit, but I'm like, I you know, if you know, it, it makes sense. But actually, I'm in a great space right now. Okay. You know. So tell the people, tell the people out there what you were trying to actually do today. Well, today was the Business Networking Event 2023. Um, Jeff knows he's been actually trying to get me to do events for a while now. Yes, Lord. Starting. Yes, Lord. But I kind of just, I felt like I retired from doing that. I didn't really um, want to do it anymore. Um, so the bank came to me with a great opportunity to um, put on an event at the Railcast Stadium. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get to the Railcast Stadium. It wasn't what we talked about. Mm-hmm. So this is one of those, I feel like, when people always say um, the pros and cons, and I felt like this was like mm-hmm. a failed attempt. I felt like because I just know how I kind of operate and do things. So I was a little um, crushed and upset and hurt in the beginning mm-hmm. because I looked at the opportunities that it could provide for all of us black owners or business owners to get seen, get a little bit maybe foot more for our foot track for, for our businesses. Mm-hmm. But hey, we sitting up in a suite, and you know some people stayed and some people left. But, you know, people was very Mm -hmm. understanding about what happened and how the ball was dropped on some things. So I'm not going to beat myself up. But what I'm going to do is Mm -hmm. do something else. So if I put this together, guess what? We're going to do something else where we actually have a real event. Yeah, Because (laughs) the name of the game, people, is resilience. And the thing is, whenever you have a business, whenever you have anything like that, you want to make sure... I always look at it like this. There's never a failed attempt when you're in business, people. What it is is that there's always a way to look at something greater and better on the other side. And if you're not trying to do that, what are you in business for? If you're not willing to look at the bright side of things and how different things can kind of come about, like, yo, we don't have time to complain. What we mm-hmm. have time to do is we have time to create, to make money, and to make things better. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, it's hard, yeah, though, man. It's hard. I, I, was, uh, I was actually watching, uh, mm-hmm. I was watching this special with Grant Cardone, anybody that's in business, you know Grant Cardone. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, one of the one of the richest men in uh, mm-hmm. the world, not even the U.S. in the world. And so he went on this uh, this uh, billionaire. It was uh, it was a it was like undercover undercover. Uh, what's the name of it? undercover boss? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's for entrepreneurs. Really? They, okay. But he was they put him out in the middle of a city that nobody knew him. He had to shave his head. Yeah, and mm. he. Basically, had to build himself back up. They gave him a hundred dollars. That was he was in the desert, right? Yeah. Well, he was in Pueblo. He was in Pueblo, Colorado. They that. gave him a truck, a hundred dollars, yeah. and he said, "I could make a million dollar business." I think it was like sixty days. Yeah. From a hundred dollars and a truck, no place to stay. Mm-hmm. They drop you off. Nobody knows you. You can't use any of your contacts. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I was watching was 
it was the show, but it was him talking about the background to the show. And it was amazing because, uh, you know, just like you just got down, this man is on the yeah. top of his game. He does. Uh-huh. He did a hundred million dollars in a month in real estate, a hundred million dollars wow. in a month. Man. And he get dropped out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And he talked to this guy. Yeah. And this dude treated him like crap. He didn't know him. His main thing was I need to make contacts because that's his assets. Say I, I got a hundred dollars. My ad, my my contacts are my assets. There you go. And so he he gets out in the middle of nowhere. He put the hundred dollars in the bank because he said it ain't nothing anyway. He said at least I look better than I got a bank account. <laughs> that, <laughs> you they go. could call the bank and look me up. Yeah. So I, and I'm studying all of this. I'm listening to everything that he's saying because mm-hmm. he bought this man about to build himself from nothing. To uh, he actually, I think he he pulled it to a seven million dollar business. So what did you take? Mm. What did you take? I was looking at everything that he did. What did he do? Okay. To but oh, so the the way that I'm relating it back to this is when he walked into this meeting, this man treated him like garbage. He couldn't tell him that he was Grant Cardone, and he actually needed a minute. He and I watched him. So I'm watching him Mm -hmm. get down on himself. Mm. He's he's like, and he literally, I think he might have shed some tears. Because okay. it, yeah. it affected him that much, and you facts, and we would think in our minds like this is one of the top businessmen in in uh in the in the world, yeah. and he don't get down no more. He just keep it moving. No, he's a human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You still gonna get down, Jennifer. You had this day. You still gonna yeah. get down. But his bounce back was so quick. Mm-hmm. He literally he remembered. He started uh, one thing that I noticed, and he don't say this. You just gotta pick it up. As after he got done being down on himself, he got back and he started building himself up right away. He allowed himself to be down and say, and he told the camera crew, get away from me. I don't want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. I can't do this right now. He said, yeah. y'all about to mess me up. And he was like, he was, you could see he was shaking. He was affected by this. And then like 30 seconds later, he's like, all right, let's do this. Mm-hmm. We got to go. Yeah, we got to go. Get it out. Yeah, we That's have to. Is. Now we got to go. Yeah. Now we got to go and talk to this person. That's done. Mm-hmm. That's over with. I allowed myself to be done. Yeah. And that's what you did today. That's done and over. We in the yeah. room right now. Yeah. It's the bounce yeah. back game. Yeah. And it's tell you how, how can you take a no and come back from it? Yeah. Yes. yes. Because the name of the game is resilience, people. Resiliency. resiliency. That's why because we got a core because of resilience. It, it is. <laughs> look, 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 let me tell y'all this quick story about the core real quick. That's how we got the core. My man was looking for an extension core. I'm humble. Because <laughs> he humble, y'all, because he had to go ahead, plug in. We have we got our whole setup behind here, man. It take a little time to do this. But he needed an extension core so he can plug up his thunder pole. It's Thunderbolt box or whatever. All my man did was he didn't he didn't say, Jeff, I'm gonna go back to your car and get it. He said, Why should I have to go back to your car if I can just ask? So he asked. He you have not because you asked now, right, people? So he asked. A median no. Uh, it, that's right. <laughs> no, sorry, we don't have that. No, sorry, sure? we have no, that. we don't have that. No. Nope. Which but I knew that was incorrect. Like quit playing. You got yeah. a dog on stitch a cord around yeah. here. And then what happened at the end? She got an she had an extension. We got a red extension yeah, said, cord. Well, the thing is, what I'm learning, man, what I'm learning is this, is I had to ask myself, especially with my podcast, with the business that I started, how do I make money and what am I selling? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're doing podcasting, what am I selling? And I and I came, I actually put it on camera. I put the, I set yeah. it up while I was driving. I said, yeah. what, how can I make money off this? Of course, everybody say you can make money off ads. You can make money off of, uh, off of whatever. What am I selling? I'm selling myself every day that we all wake right. up. You selling yourself, you selling your personality, mm-hmm. you selling your, I went to a concert last night, Snoop Dogg, uh, uh, Snoop Dogg, Too Short. And you look, what's the t-shirts they sell? It's got Snoop's face all over it. All these years, he's been selling himself. He sell weed because that's what he do. That's what he do. He's yeah, smart. Right. It's, a, it's a part of Snoop. It's right. actually a part and, of Snoop. And he, and he got his own weed company because I smoke weed every day. I might as well have a company about it. Right. He making money. We make money right. off of who we are. We sell yeah. ourselves every day. You got to... Uh, you got to push yourself out there. So what do I do? She gave me a no, and I'm learning that I'm selling myself. So she don't care if she give me a cord or not. I care if you give me a cord or not. Let me give you some options here. So how about this? How about, you know, I know you got a cord. No, I don't have one. What about the vacuum cleaner? You know what, sir? You're right. Because <laughs> she don't care. I wouldn't care either if I was her. So long story short, people always ask about the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the not, vacuum cleaner. No, 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 Don't take a no. Yeah, don't, don't take a no. Don't take a no. Keep pushing until you get that yes. I had to be funny in here, people. I got to put that little yeah, stuff Don't take a no. <laughs> people don't tell you no because nobody cares about your business. That's yeah. it. Don't but nobody you. care about your business. You. They're gonna tell you no automatically, right out the right out the gates. They're gonna say, No, I'm sorry, I don't need that. And then you gotta 
you got to find a way. How do they need this? Jennifer, how do you talk me into, look, you talked about your comfortable chair as part of you as your comfortable chair. And let's, bro, let's segue into that. I'm right? sorry. Yeah. Cause I talk all day. That. Let me shut up, Jennifer. You especially. Let's, say, let's segue into that because we, we, we did a lot of talking y'all before we were actually yeah, here. Yeah. Know, we did a lot of talking. Even brought me up. Before we, <laughs> It's all right, dog. You're good. Look, look, listen. The whole thing with this podcast is people got to be dropping nuggets. And if y'all was paying attention, this man dropped some nuggets. So if mm-hmm. you missed it, you missed it. But if you got it, you got it. So now we got one part of the nugget piece. Let's move on to the other part here. Uh-huh. So let tell them about your comfortable chair scenario. Give them some game real quick on the ambiance and the setup. How you just steal people money. How you make people steal. How you just zero. take people money. Take it. You they just, give it to me. I even gave you a tip. And they give it to me with grace. Uh-huh. Because again, I sell myself yes. the knowledge, what I can offer them. I don't start off telling people about the money aspect. Mm-hmm. I'm letting them know why they need this a part of their life. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I make my office and my whole vibe in my office nice and inviting. I didn't want like a typical office with cheers and, you know, the whole tax office. A lot of people are mm-hmm. like, it, it smells nice in here, good vibe, it's music, things like that. You shut that door. So... I feel like this. People is coming into my office and they spending a lot of money. So I want to make it very comfortable for you because I want you to feel good about going in your pocket and your wallet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times is people say, I say I have 30 minute consultations. I don't know how many people who have been in my office two and three hours. You better tell Sometimes people just need to vent, get things off their chest and things like that. They looking for (laughs) answers. So Mm -hmm. the crazy part is people don't notice about me. I used to want to be a therapist. I find myself dealing with business that I have literally therapy sessions on a regular basis every day at work with people. I like to encourage people um, Mm -hmm. when people feel like Mm -hmm. this is the end of the world. They want to get off, give up on themselves. I always kind of like give people a backstory of where I started. And I always tell people it's never going to be an easy road. Like today, I was very upset. I almost wanted to, you know, I told Jeff I wanted to punch him a little bit. Probably the wall. <laughs> probably a couple people. Yeah, you the know. The guy at the desk, but yeah. I just told myself like... That's what she said. <laughs> It is what it is at this point because it's like I felt like at this point this was like one of those failure moments. That's what I felt like to me. But I had a lot of support from everybody and that actually, like I said, it just softened the blow a whole lot. So again, is this one of those moments where you feel like it's the end of the world? You feel that something. Sometimes when that happens with a lot of people, they feel like I'm done. I'm over it. Blah, blah, blah. But at my in my mind, I felt like this was like a teaching moment. Yeah. Okay, I learned go. something from this. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. This happened. Now it's what you're going to do. That back. And, and that's that thing. Yeah. yo. You got to make sure that you learn from every experience that you go through on the journey. Yeah. Because that's the thing. It's so easy to quit and give up. It's mm-hmm. so easy to say I'm done. But if you're not learning from how do you, how do you expect yourself to grow from that? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I hate my job. Yeah. I just want to quit it. I mean, I, love- I hear this from Jeffrey probably like at least <laughs> once or twice a week. <laughs> Lord. But we have learned- We're praying for him to come out but, this meal. But <laughs> what have you learned from your job? Like I've learned I'm I'm a I'm a, a boss on my job. And it's if I didn't yeah. have this job, there's so many things that I wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to take into my own business that I'm starting. God know. You yes, know what sir. I mean? And I probably still need this job. God, I don't but everything you learn throughout <laughs> the course of journey of life, mm-hmm. I always feel like all the different jobs that I hated, things mm-hmm. that I did because I had to provide for me and my son, actually, it actually prepared me yes. to be my own boss. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. And that's what yeah. it is because it's certain aspects that I can't stand about my job. I, no- I normally can't stand people, but it's funny. I do your I taxes. You make a lot of money, you Jeffrey. <laughs> 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 okay, y'all. Leave that alone. Yeah, what she put out like, all my your, business. But your check is fat, she right? She just put out my get business. Quiet. I don't care about the check being fat, but what I'm learning is it's about the quality. A well, your time, check is very quality to me. You know what? <laughs> People don't listen. She count my pockets. Don't listen. She count my pockets. But anyway, <laughs> but, taxes. But, <laughs> I got time for you. But the thing is, you know, it's, it, what it's about people is, is that I hate my job. But the thing is, a lot of things that I learned was that I have a low tolerance for for like people just knowing how to do stuff because when I do my job I'm gonna do it right you know what I mean when you have a job you want to do it right you want to do it to the highest level I don't care if the person behind me didn't do the highest level but the thing is I'm not gonna come up and try to fix their mistakes too you know what I mean so what I learned from my job is do the best that you can do because if you do the best that you can do you put your best foot forward and if somebody else don't Sometimes it might trickle back and come on you, but you if you know how to adaptably work around people, you'll never have to worry about that. No doubt. Only thing I deal with is attitudes. And I'm okay with attitudes because I can just 
walk to the left or right and leave you out by yourself. You I can leave your attitude with that. No matter what. Yeah, because <laughs> exactly, yeah. that's a choice. That's yeah. a choice. You you choose to to let somebody's negativity enter into your space and into your room. And I choose when I'm at a job for eight, twelve, or sixteen hours to say, "Nah, homie, I'm good." Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Well, I witnessed one time you was arguing with a coworker, and I'm like, "Calm down." She heard the whole Calm conversation. Down. It was wild. It was like I asked the question, my man went left real fast, real and quick. she was like, "I thought they was going to start fighting that word." <laughs> nah, I ain't got time for that. Security escorts you out all this. You gotta stuff realize like that. environments like that are a little different than the office environment. <laughs> and this is true when you when you in a more rugged industrial esque environment. We talk a little different. We may say things a little vulgar. We may we may go ahead and some things might slip out. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But if you in your office setting, you keeping everything professional. Always. You know, always. Even when sometimes I get yelled at, things like that. I always keep a smile on my face. Mm-hmm. I don't let other people's energy dictate how I'm going to like, operate or deal with them on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. You know, I just let them get out. And after so long, when I'm still being nice to people, they be like, you know what? I apologize for my behavior. I was going through X, Y, Z. Fact. And I kind of like figure that out sometimes. Sometimes people just need to vent and they might just unleash on you because a person, he just left the store, she just left the stove, treated them a certain type of way. So they need to get that frustration out. And you just the first person that they just, yeah. you but know, how, far, up how far is too far with that unleashing and that, well, now, that jabbing out on somebody? Well, don't cuss else. me out, call me out my name now. <laughs> I'm gonna open up a top drill with my little friend right there. <laughs> Saying, oh, Lord. You know, I keep my little friend close. So, this is what we realized. You know, people, I keep a friend if close. You didn't get nothing from this statement right here. <laughs> Just know that if you knock on the door, she got a piece I got my of friend. steel waiting on you. <laughs> she got that Medea piece of steel. And I am not scared to hear this. Mm-mm. Bro, I was with her when she closed up one day. She, I was her last client of the day, and she just talking to me. And she just you had to watch she, yourself. And she talking, she just she like yeah. So you know, I was, Jennifer, how long you been? She just pull out the gun and tuck it in her purse, <laughs> <laughs> put it on, and we walk out the door. I say, well, at least I know I'm safe. <laughs> That is what we call comfortable protection, people. Right. I know because I get all the time. People are like, you right. ain't scared? I be like, no, I got my little friend right here. Well, I don't be scared. Be I never scared. Even people that I yeah. just met, I don't never feel like somebody is going to harm me or anything yeah. like that. Like, I feel like I give good energy and I kind of like know people's vibe and things mm-hmm. like that. So yeah. even like I had like two dudes sitting up in there looking like some thugs one day. I was just like real comfortable and cool. They was looking at me like all oh, grimy and everything. I'm like, child, please. This one guy, I went to go mm-hmm. show him a rental property. It was like five dudes who walked in. Now, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little nervous that day. And the dude told me, he was like, mm-hmm. man, I just knew you was gangster because you walked up in the house with a bunch of dudes and you ain't know. And you just look like you was cool. I said, oh, no, I had my friend in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I had, my, I had my hand in the pocket as uh-huh. I was walking in. Oh, I yeah. went tripping. She was ready. Oh, yeah. 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 In your little dress. It's going to be a whole hole <laughs> in you. <laughs> <laughs> she, got a, <laughs> she got her hands in her dress with a gun in her pocket. <laughs> they ain't even going to know what hit her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's messed up. <laughs> Jennifer, what's the name of your business? And, and, yeah, uh, and then I want to give a shout out to your business too, because you did me right. You did me, you did something for me that hasn't been done for me in 10 years. Uh no, my friend, all in one tax service. He was excited. He asked me, did I need any more money mm. or anything? Did I did I need anything else? I'm like, no. So he always, do you mm. want me to share or you can share? Go ahead. Uh, you well, share a little well, bit. Yeah, well, well, what's all in one tax services? So you did my taxes this year. Mm-hmm. This was the first year that I had a business and I I didn't know how to do any of this. And, right. and you said, Ron, you put your business in, in here with this. Yeah. And she said, You have write offs. What have you done? And I didn't even realize some of the write offs I got. Mm-hmm. I have literally mm-hmm. been uh I've owed the government every year for the past. I've got you like a little small refund this year, then look. I- Small, it was a refund period. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to paying. Understand right. this, period. yeah. Understand like 10 this. years, Jennifer. I went and I was taking my taxes to other people to do my taxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have actually, I probably could have used this business last year, yeah. Yeah, I could have used it yeah. last year, but you used it on uh, on well, 2022's taxes, yeah. Either way, and this is the first time in 10 years I got I didn't owe, forget getting money back, and on yeah. top of that, I got money back on top mm-hmm. of that. I was paying month by month. And so you actually, that I was able to take what I got back yeah. and pay off my debt. And now I don't. That's what I wanted yeah, to do. I, I said, I want to try to get else. you enough money where you can pay your debt off. Yeah. And you was like, really? I'm like, man, people don't know Jennifer Williams. Man. Man, you need to get into it. Jennifer y'all Williams holler, and all the tax services. Right now, now, right now, here, we do have to say this. Y'all holler right at now, all in one tax services, man. She right will there. do you right. She there is a professional now. You go sit on that couch, she's going to get you right. Now, listen. Don't go acting up, though. And for the people that's wondering, 
she not gonna get you no illegal money, people. No, no we no. have to. We have to. Oh, everything was legit. Yeah, everything was legit. Because there's yeah. some people throughout the years, and I'm gonna say it in Northwest Indiana who got shut down. Because I know a lot of scamming. Them. She know a lot. Of I them. had a couple people run up on me. It was trying uh-huh. to act like they was trying to get their taxes done, but they was trying to like fill me out. <laughs> and mm-hmm. one dude said, "I scrubbed the black market." I said, "What's the black market?" He said, "Well, a site where people be trying to like dump stuff off where they don't want you to see." He said they used to have mm-hmm. four hundred clients. His wife actually went to prison. Um, one of the people from the IRS mm-hmm. posed That's as love, a boy. customer or whatever, <laughs> and she was doing some illegal stuff. Now she took the hit for it. She took the hit for her husband. <laughs> now you wonder why his wife can't stand him. <laughs> Dude, your wife is in prison for you. Hey. What you mean? I put money on her books. <laughs> oh, no. And he was trying to see was I professional? Was I one of those Grammy people Jesus. who said they used to have over four hundred clients? They had it sold up. Uh, he was like, "Man, you like real thorough." I checked you out. I said, "Well, I'm glad you checked me out." Mm-hmm. But I always tell my clients, "I want you to check me out. I want you to feel comfortable yeah. doing business with me." So I don't just work with people in Indiana, Illinois. It's actually, my clients is all over. Mm-hmm. So um, I prefer people to do they due diligence on me because, like, a lot of my clients, I want to say about half of them, I'm never even met or seen in person before so which is good because a lot of times they say they find me on google and they say they read my reviews i have mm-hmm. great reviews and they say my face look friendly so that's the only reason they went with me because i look friendly until they meet her that matters let me stop <laughs> let me stop but see that's what's up and see that's why we got to highlight this now i'm gonna say this now we have options today people because there are a few things that we could talk about today yes we've hit on the business side i didn't know if we were gonna go and segue into something else as well people just so you know we were talking about relationships earlier so this can get a little deep i like now, that y'all know y'all know how i go uh usually your boy be yapping by himself so i give y'all 30 minutes or less of jeff because it's only so much accountability that jeff, y'all gets can out. jeff gets out and they know i can talk and as you can see, my cousin can talk too. Oh, yes. You can together. tell they related. We they very there. long-winded, <laughs> both of them. Jesus. So <laughs> I got so, a story for a story. <laughs> so, this is, so this is what I'm gonna ask y'all because we can pit. Do y'all want to pivot into the relationship part of this? Because we, we're we really about to do that. Because I got a good. Because we, we could do 30 minutes of the business. Yeah, we had a great conversation. Yeah, you know, uh, Shalika sitting over there. She was very um, mm-hmm. giving her. Input, inputs yes. on things. Input on things. Yeah, everybody in the room. Mm-hmm. So we can make this like an open forum. Oh, let's make it open for. Okay, so who is gonna ask the first question? We got one, two, three, four, five. We got five people. I have a wonderful question for you, gentlemen. Go ahead. So hold on, hold on. We are gonna do it oh, like yeah, this. You wanna, uh, we want you to be heard. We gonna swing this mic over. You don't come on. Come just get closer to the mic. quite loudly. Okay. <laughs> Damn, go ahead. I, I'm gonna point it this way for you. Go ahead. So as a single woman, Mm -hmm. I struggle with men Mm -hmm. um, contacting me via my DM. Okay. It makes me very uncomfortable. (laughs) Okay. Um, Okay. Put that so elegantly. Okay. Contacting me via my DM. And and and, Mm -hmm. and I know it's a method of communication. Okay. Um, I don't want to be rigid and cold. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't want to appear that I'm down for whatever either. Okay. So help me to gain perspective because as a business owner, I feel like all my info is public. Mm-hmm. Why the necessity in using the DM to contact someone that you're supposedly interested in? And should I be uncomfortable in that? And what questions can okay. I ask to weed out the intention? So I'm going to tell you why they in the DM. Uh-uh. Men, men in the DM. Tell because me because I'm tired of them being a man. It's, it's, it's because you might want to take your logo off of this. <laughs> man, look, we, we already in the game now. We already in this deep. Ain't no turning back now. So I'm going to tell you why they in the I'm DM. The, the reason truth. why they in the DM. Well, we're going to tell the truth. They're, they in the DM because they want to be discreet. Mm. Whenever you're dealing with men who just want to contact you that way. Now, granted, me and my wife, we, did, we met via dating app. Okay. okay, so I didn't have to do a DM or nothing. I tried something different. You know, it it can work for certain people. Mm-hmm. So I don't knock it because sending the DM isn't a bad thing. But first, I would ask while they're being discreet, what is on your Facebook page? Is it strictly business? Is it business fun? And business and Jesus. There right. it is. Okay, well, girl, there ain't nothing but the enemy trying to knock on your door. <laughs> And so, you know, um, a test. In, the, in the salon, we had a conversation mm-hmm. and they made me feel bad. 
Okay. Because I was like, look, I'm talking to my DM. This is yeah. my number. If you want to buy a house, call. Like, literally, that's how I would cut them off. And do they call house. you? Do they call you? Never. Even Because they don't want no house. house. They want now something else. I've tried to do, I've tried to be a little bit mm-hmm. nicer. Like, hey, how are you? Beautiful. Oh, I'm great. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, morning, how was beautiful. your day? How was your day? <laughs> mm-hmm. Where you from? Where you from? Like, so we go through this whole yeah. dialogue. I'm trying not to be rigid and cold. And mm-hmm. normally, at some point, I say, "Hey, this is not my preferred method of conversation." Okay. Here is my number. If you would like to continue conversing, feel free to give me a call or text. Mm-hmm. They uh, generally do not convert into mm-hmm. call or text. Okay. <laughs> Miss, what uh, you got? What you because got? they right. married or something and they don't want like the. <laughs> I wonder, are they from the country trying to get some green cards? You want to be now, now, is it the African men, men contacting you? No, these are normal. And I don't know if these are fake pages. Men in either. general suck. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, I mean, uh oh, uh oh. I was here. He about to take it here. Yeah, because we just do. I mean, like I, I should say we. I mean, just as a whole, it's just the men's council needs to get together and kick some of these cats men's out. <laughs> but like, it's yeah. men in general. A lot of a lot of men uh, can't hold uh, conversations. conversations. Mm-hmm. A lot of men. Uh, Is that why they do a lot of texting? Huh? Is that why they do a lot of texting? Because I feel like a man who do a lot of texting have no social skills. Well, but I feel like if you can articulate to me in in, in text yeah. in a way that holds my attention, yeah. well, you're already on the side. I don't yeah, like right. texting, no. I don't like texting. It's mm-hmm. impersonal. But if, you, but if you can text me in a way yeah. mm-hmm. that you have intrigued my intelligence yeah. and you can hold me in a conversation, okay. then I feel you've earned the right to converse with me. Mm-hmm. So, okay. for me, that text tells me a lot of who I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you do you know the English language? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start there. Exactly. <laughs> no, I dated somebody who was like, "Why you gotta use them big words?" Oh See, wow, that's what I'm saying. So if you yes. can articulate, mm-hmm. that's that's our okay. That's one of the check boxes. Yeah. Okay, so maybe now we can now have a conversation. So I'm not turned off by text. Mm. You get a minimum of three texts from me. After that, pick up the phone and call me. I just don't feel like so. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You actually want me to text this to you? That's okay. Yeah. I think, I, I think men are terrible because women are liars. Whoa. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> All right, John. Oh, Jesus Christ. He, uh, he would do this on wait, my podcast. Let me, yeah. let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I mean. Let me tell you what I mean. Just take it, I say, and I'm doing. And I and I always have really to give Ryan? this disclaimer because we just talked about this. Yeah, I'm overgeneralizing. These are overgeneralizations. So if you don't find yourself in there, then don't you they know. Don't but your girlfriend probably is, is somebody that yeah. you know is in is is in, in this that generalization category. that I'm talking about. The reason I say women are liars, even on my, so I'm going through divorce right now. I ventured out on Facebook dating, and uh, already, yeah, no yeah. time to heal. I, that's my healing. Yeah. <laughs> really, Ryan? Now, hold on. Now listen. Now listen. Uh, Everybody do stuff differently. Yeah, because yeah. I waited for two years before I. Started women, that women are different, and you have to realize inside, inside, just really? being transparent. It seems like you don't want to be by yourself. Well, no, that's not it. I could totally uh, be by well. myself. You just want to enjoy someone's yeah, company. Yeah, I just want to enjoy somebody's you company. Have Thank you. Now, see, now, see, now, see, that's so the like, well, and you I want to talk to Jennifer over, over here. here. Oh. Like, I'm just trying to use people. Well, well, no. Because, <laughs> because how, how, she, how you put it was great, because there are people who do just enjoy other people's company. Yes. Because I no, listen. When I was listening, hold on. That up front. Exa- and that's what I think. I'm a terrible liar. I'm a terrible liar. Yes. So I'm not. Yeah, I just tell you right out the I'm gate. Really so yes. yeah. Enjoy some was I wrong yeah. that I I didn't want to? I couldn't really stomach the male species. But that's that's when I went through my divorce. Yeah. yeah, you took your time based on what you went through. Wow. <laughs> why? So why? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, because everybody just ooed me when I said with my wife. On oh, my Facebook dating, I've had a lot of women, and I, I like to read profiles, which a lot of men don't. That's why I say men suck, mm-hmm. because they don't. They just look at pictures like three-year-olds, and then just click, oh. But what are you looking uh, for when you look at the profile? When I look at their profile, I look to find out whether they liars or not. In the like, <laughs> because because a, lot of, a lot of these women will say, I don't want to do this. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. I don't want this, and I don't want that. Did you read my profile? And, no. Okay. But I mean, this is I, I get I get that what a lot. You come up with and me. so what I get was is that, ma'am, I'm everything that you said 
that you didn't want, and yet here you are. You chose me. Why did you choose me if I if, if you saying that you don't want oh, this? You don't wait, want wait, that. That's gotta I, be. I, I literally, that's gotta I don't listen to what I don't mm-hmm. listen to what women tell me they not yeah. gonna do or what they yeah. not and what they not yeah, because you're just talking. I'm saying you can that's say not a harsh yeah. you're a liar. Yeah. I think a lot of them just don't understand what they want. Yeah. They I think no they have no idea. They yeah. they 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 don't. And so what I find mm-hmm. is but the reason I say men are liars too, I say oh, women are liars, they come out they come out the gate. Men will lie. Men lie in in defense. Like you'll say, "Are you married?" No, I ain't married. Bro. Do you, you come out the gay line? Huh? Do you come out the gay line? I'm not good at lying, so no, no he ain't good at lying. No, He's I'm not. Up. So I just come He's out the gate. Up. I tell. But also, with me telling you the truth, you just put on your profile what you ain't gonna put up with. I just told you that I'm not all the way through this divorce. I said I'm in the middle of it, which is fine with me. Well, you said I ain't dealing with this and I ain't dealing with that, ma'am. I'm bad. What you dealing with me? And see, that's the thing. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> feel that people. Wasn't. I kind of feel that when people go ahead, they they get puffed up. They say what they're not going to do, and they are going to do. You always going to do the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. Whatever you the strongest about, you say you not going to do. Yeah. When it's faced and it's put right in front of you, <laughs> and you have to make a split decision, unless it didn't it didn't mess you up in a certain way, or you just really die hard not putting up with it. You going to stick your little pinky toe in there and you going to test it. Mm-hmm. My, my, my belief is mm-hmm. I don't have to even talk about it. I just have to be it. So I don't have to there be this list. Can we put the camera on you, man? Yeah, put the camera on. Yeah. In a certain way and either it's going to work for you yeah. or it's not. I need to yeah. say So I don't have to give you a disclaimer. I don't think nobody's married. If I ask you if you're married and you say you are, I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, so why does there need to be this long... I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that because yeah. we know for the right one, we'll do some stuff that right. we said we would. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but so, man, we just met. How am I the right one? I guess, no, I guess, you're absolutely right. I get. It. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My answer is because most of the answers to those questions are lies. Mm-hmm. They're not telling you. Yeah. Somebody, if they're married, yeah. they're not gonna tell you the truth. Right. I, I, women are astonished when I tell the truth. Yeah. So do they still yeah. proceed with you when they find out that you are? Quote unquote, going through the divorce. I haven't found one that hasn't. Really? <laughs> what was that question again? So, so they're, they're, they're but you lying. know, but my he's main. In that yeah. And he's a decent looking guy. Yeah. So let's just see what he might do. Yeah. And so then, do you feel like they're trying to see if they're going to be the next chosen yeah. one? And then I just want to talk to you. You told him you'll do anything he's talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, they, and they will. And on my thing. profile, I made yeah. it funny. I said, I said, uh, I said, it ain't tricking if you got it, but you probably ain't going to get it. <laughs> and so I'm telling you that I'm, ma'am, I'm not, I'm not your sugar daddy. Like I'm telling you, it ain't tricking. You take them on trips. It ain't tricking if you got it, but if it's mine, you probably not gonna get it. I'm just saying, like I don't even know you like that, and I, I, I and I get. <laughs> And I, get, <laughs> and I get I get women I get women that say, Oh, I want a man to take care of me and I you know like and then you chose me, so you hit that little the, you hit the little heart and now like did you read my profile because I'm yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not paying none of your bills. I'm not doing none of that. Like if I, it's going to be a process to that. You, you know, pay I believe in, I believe in taking care of, but no, I'm, I'm not being used. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. There you go. Cause there's I'm a not difference out from, here. There's Look, a difference there's too from, many cats out here simping. I'm not going to be buying nobody's affection. You don't like me because you like me and you're going to love me because you love me. I'm not putting no money into it. I can't, I'm not into that. I'm not into buying affection. So let's say what this in then. So yeah. when is it a good time to start actually doing something like that? So let's say this, you know, it's always in a man's nature to want to help an egg, correct? So let's say if I see no, where, well, right. come on, man, let me, let me get it out, dog. Let me I'm get sorry, it out. Hold on. Because listen, it's, it's not always, it's not always for all men to want to help. But when you have a good man, a kind hearted man, what he wants to do is he wants to make sure that you are okay. Yeah. Can we all agree on that? Agreed. Can we agree on that in the room? Yeah. Okay. There we go. So we got a baseline. So, when is it okay for a woman to deny that help, or is she going to accept that help because she knows that he can take care of something? I don't. Without, without, well, girl, uh-uh, you don't count because you, uh-uh, you don't fall in that category. I know you. You don't fall in that category. But I'm saying, in a general sense, like, when is that woman, when is it okay for that man to go ahead and say, look, I can help you? 
But when is it good for also for her to deny that help because she can actually do it on her own and not wanting to help out of convene? Right. Say that again. Right. She should be capable. Yeah. Right. Whatever yes. lifestyle she's accustomed to, she's capable of maintaining. Yeah. Yeah. Now the trick is meeting the need that she mm-hmm. doesn't talk about. Doing something beyond the basics. You ain't got to pay her rent. You ain't got to pay her utilities. But hey, if you send her a gift card, a bouquet of flowers, and say, hey, here I'm being. Mm-hmm. Just something out of the ordinary just because mm-hmm. you want to be a blessing. There yeah, it is. right, because paying bills start getting a little too personal. Come on yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, that is. It speaks ownership. And that is. And they own you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. You know. And see, that's why I say, well, who's going to say something else? I said, not going to happen. Not gonna have, there you go. So see, and I kind of feel that a lot of times when we're dating, people get very lax. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of times we don't ask enough questions. We don't dive Agreed. deeper into stuff. We move into stuff because let's just be real. We have a lot of needs as people. Yeah. We just have a lot of needs. Yeah. Human so things, some period, so yeah. human things, period. So yeah. let's say, oh, baby, you need help on that cell phone. Baby, I am kind of like, <laughs> okay. So I, right, so you know, you look like a brother going to slide. I'm you. paying your cell phone bill. Yeah, yeah, no. Because the thing is, then if, if, if it's deemed as, because I've heard women say this, it could be deemed as, oh, well, he mean or he rude or he don't want to help out. He see me struggling. But I've always said it like this. Let me tell you why I'm with my wife. I'm with my wife because this is the first woman that I have been with who came to me and told me, Jeff, I don't need you for nothing. She told me, all I want you to do is love me and show me some attention. Baby, I could do that all day. And most, <laughs> women, most women I know aren't going to allow you to take care of them. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to mm-hmm. think outside the box in order to be a blessing to us. But it's out there. You know? But it's, it's, it's still, But because I'm speaking to that dynamic that's still out there. For that other half of women that don't need it, sometimes the men, we for the yeah for the half that's out there okay. that don't need it there's another half that do need it yeah, yeah. and sometimes in most cases the none you know a man i don't want to say that he's attracting that i think he's just gravitating toward that because that's is his nature you feel what i'm saying well, it's in his start off with that oh, I can do some with that because because i feel that it's in his nature because he wants to help but i think that when he gets cut off then it's like oh crap how can I help that woman now? Do you think what can I do for her? I done had men when I just meet, met them. Mm-hmm. I want to take you on a trip. Can we? Can we book this trip? I'm like, dude, I don't even know your last now, he name. He ain't trying to pay no bill. He trying right. to woo you and get you some. And, I, and I'm telling you, like, I done turned down so many different trips, and people be like, girls be like, some women be like, girl, you turn that trip. I'm like, you know, car booty or airplane ride type of, because guess what when you accept the things like that what's what's happening when you get there yeah, he's yeah. going to expect something yeah. you see what i'm saying so i was just yeah, always told like to have your own i didn't have me <laughs> ask me about paying my mortgage like mm-hmm. hey can i live with you no thank you i can pay my own bills yeah exactly i agree yeah, yeah. i agree and yeah. i've had it a yeah, lot i'm not interested in that because i feel like it's a sign of control you see what i'm saying so yeah. i was always told have your own be an independent mm-hmm. woman things like that and yeah. if a man does something for you that's extra but be able to take care of your own provide for yourself not sitting here thinking that oh i need this man to take care of me things like that you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. Uh, and vice versa, men, men, stop, stop moving in with women. Have your own. <laughs> stop, Agree. Stop, Agree. Stop. They don't never yeah. end right when you walking out the door with that garbage bag. <laughs> and it ain't hey, your home. Ron, right. have you been, look, Ron, have you been there before with that garbage bag? Absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely like not. Oh, <laughs> like he knows it's not. Awesome. A woman as, when approaching her as an opportunity to take care yeah. of her. I've never. Even with my current wife, I, um, say that again. I've never looked at it as well. I'm gonna get to meet this young lady and see if I can take care of her. Mm-hmm. I have to look for the courtship, like somebody that you can yeah. get to know. Yeah, yeah. So let's so let's talk about that, that courtship. that way, yeah. I'm like, man, I think I'm gonna marry you. So what is proper courtship? <laughs> what is proper uh, courtship like, nowadays? What's, like, what's up? Like, what y'all doing? Like, you want to go get something to eat? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then communication. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, cause honestly, we, me and my wife, we worked together today mm. and before we got married, we kind of worked together. Okay. So Is that how y'all met? Basically, yeah. Okay. okay. That's kind of how we met. Okay. I'm going to tell you how the second high went though, from my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, no, it's good though. Yeah, so, so, so she worked at this company <laughs> that I was trying to work at and in the back were the graphic designers and usually you see male graphic designers. 
but she was in the graphic design area, the only female. And I'm like, man, look at her hair. So mm-hmm. from that point on, the courtship started. You know, okay. That's how I approached mm-hmm. it. Because I love women with beautiful hair. Mm-hmm. And that's how I came. I, I love your hair. Okay. And at that point, that's where it started. That's where we're at right now. <laughs> so I don't look at people, women like that. I'm, I'm, I've never done that. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I feel like, like you guys said, when you put yourself in a position where I'm taking care of her, People can misconstrue that as control. Yeah, facts. Especially yeah. nowadays, I have four daughters, and that's the mm-hmm. first thing I see. Oh, okay. got to take care of you. Yeah, take care of yourself. Absolutely, mm-hmm. exactly. I'm with that's, it. I just want to get my little two cents. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's good. How how many? So you you were a good guy. How many guys y'all think out here on BS? Ooh. Like about, the, I say about percentage? I say about sixty five percent. That's, 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 that's a, a high number. number. Why did you say sixty five percent? Jesus Christ, where do I begin? Now, if that's 65%, keeping in perspective, that means there's another 35% that's untapped. No, I think that's the good guys right there. The 35% is the good guys. So good? And a lot of times, women. The ones that are married, happily married to somebody. And probably the dude that's not saying you're taking them to the Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, if we had to narrow all of that down into a number, when you think of the men that are married, happily, happily married, not in your DMs being a dog mm. and not trying to pay for the trip. Ooh. What is a narrow down number? Because I just think it gets small. I'm just there. gonna say that. I mean, Jesus Christ. Well, I say cut out the cut out the guys that are married. I'm talking about the guys on like these that are up for courtship that are in the game right now. Well, yeah, it's the number of available I men think those that are hit and they consider lanes. Yeah. And I personally you know, I kind of like the laid back guy. I don't want to mm-hmm. be with a guy that everybody knows, everybody dates, mm-hmm. the neighborhood dope boys. I have never been interested in those type of guys. I yeah. like somebody that I can hang out with. Like, I don't want it to be like it's a chore to be with me mm-hmm. because you got you you got so many girls in rotation. When I find out I'm in rotation, I'm a yeah. <sighs> yeah y'all know about that rotation, huh? <laughs> I feel like. Hey, I feel okay, like, you watching that? Hey. Oh no, you done put your two cents in there. I feel like I'm about to be. I'm about to be. He good now. He coming. He taking. That was long time ago. Because uh-huh. I'm, I'm dating older. I'm open to dating older guys. The guys that okay. I'm conversing with are older, and even them, they're trying to keep a roster. I, yeah, it's not that they're trying to keep a roster. You know. You know what I think it is? Is that the guy? That you right. want, so does everybody else. I'm sorry, that's a, a good. Now, that's a, a, that's the, what, it, what it is is the guy that you just described. Most of these, it's a lot of cats, it's awkward out there, they can't hold a conversation. Mm-hmm. And so, the dude that you just described, uh, all the other women want them too, and then you throw some looks in there. Now, you just you just up the ante. Now, like a lot of women want that guy, and so. Maybe he's not trying to carry a roster. It's just hard not to. I don't mind a funny looking guy. Somebody got I don't. Do it. <laughs> I don't mind a funny looking guy. And you know, him, like his heart and everything like that. I've dated a, quite a few funny looking guys. I like those, okay. actually. Yeah. I've no, dated older, but I'm going to tell you, no. I dated one no, older man. He lied to me about his age. He told okay. me he told okay. me he was fifty six. He ended up uh-huh. being sixty five, but he had a body like a forty year old man. Woo. You wouldn't have thought that he was no sixty five years old. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I don't know. She said because he was talking about the nerd and all that other yeah. stuff, and then she was talking about they were talking, about, about, they were talking about the the man that they want, and I was saying like I do. Uh, I call it the toxic male podcast, uh, but I I do listen to and I you have to rightly divide it. But I listen to like I used to listen to Kevin Samuels and I used to listen to uh, to like a lot of those toxic mm-hmm. male podcasts. I don't a lot of the stuff I'm not riding with. I don't agree with like being angry at women and stuff like yeah. that, you know, or or. But some of the stuff that they say is true. And, and one of the things that they say yeah. is a lot of the guy that a lot of women want. A lot of women want them. now. Now, when you, you now make it in, sound so simple, and in context, you have to listen to what's being said, not the emotion behind what's said. I don't care. I don't give a damn. If nobody angry. You could be angry. You know what I mean? When you're talking about stuff, that's cool. But at the end of the day, what I'm paying attention to is okay. You're angry because in some way it touched you and it hit your nerve. It ain't gonna hit my nerve because that ain't me. So you're just expressing to me how you feel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you got to listen to what's being said instead of the emotion. So when you take these different podcasts, like uh, what was that podcast? Fresh and Fit. Fresh and, Fresh and Fit. Fit podcast. I don't know if y'all listen to that. My man be going in. But when you actually listen to what he's saying, 
it's some truth behind what he said. You know what I mean? If you listen to Kevin Samuels, Kevin Samuels was going in. But the big thing we got to remember is, though, people wanted to go on the show. And when they want to go on your show and when they're not going to do it, when they click that button to accept the request, now you have to be open to what's being said. If you take criticism to it, you have to be open to that. So a lot of people got mad at Kevin for opening up a door, but I didn't think Kevin opened up the door. He had the platform. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wanted to come on, they can open up the door because they knew what he was about before they got on. You feel me? So I don't look at it as you say toxic male. I don't think it's too much toxic male. What I think is, I think it's people expressing how they feel because they have an audience. So then when they open up that door, now it's like, all right. You got you got a 50 50 chance of getting ridiculed or, or skin like a cat or yeah. chopped up like a duck in yeah. this bad boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I say that tongue in cheek. It's You're not the same thing yeah. that we were taught not to say openly. Yes. You know, you I, think that's it, it or you've uh, mm-hmm. you've uh, come across it, you're observant to it. But yeah. you're not supposed to say it yeah. um out loud. But yeah, I'm I'm shocked at mm-hmm. um the thought process of women in my age group, like, that's, you still struggling with that? Yeah. You still drawing that guy? Like, you, I'm, I'm just shocked. I'll be 50. Like, mm-hmm. that shouldn't be your thing. Like, mm-hmm. really? You know, so mm-hmm. I see how if the majority of women in my age group are thinking like this, then that guy's perception of women in my age group, this is why it's harder for me to weed through because I'm not the norm. Mm-hmm. There it is. So You're when different. I'm sticking out like yep. a sore thumb and mm-hmm. I look difficult, I yeah. look compl- complicated mm-hmm. and yes. complex mm-hmm. yes. because everybody else is letting you grab sharks in a 40 mm-hmm. ounce and come by the house. You, uh, have, uh, st- you uh, have standards uh, and, and be, other women don't have standards. And I'll be very, and I'll be very, and I'll be very open yeah. and honest. Real talk. I'll be very. Yeah, sharks in a port. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. Well, I was in the mirror, Bill, he was trying to oh, come back. Yeah, yeah. 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 We want to take you out sometimes. No. And these are men in their uh. 50s. But that is a test to see what type of woman you are. Absolutely. It's like which way can I like come at her? Absolutely. If you with mm-hmm. it, they gonna be with it. And then you wonder why when you call him, he ain't answering the phone. I'm like, guess what? He got what he wanted already. I ain't gotta put nothing else into this. Right. And I'm gonna tell you this. To speak to the to speak to the point that you made earlier about uh being different and everything. We have to remember, too, we live in a culture where both men and women aren't used to right and correct. Right. You feel me? Because when we're when we're from from where we young, we are taught to be a certain way. But then when you finally or have your eyes opened up and you become an adult, you realize that the world is a cruel place. So what well, we're not introduced first off to the nurturing side of the world. You know what I mean? We're taught the nurturing side of the world because that's what mommy and daddy teach us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when they let us loose and we become of age, now we have to weed through the mess. Mm -hmm. So I I, I like to look at it. Sometimes both sexes are going, we get survival instinct and mold going on. And then what we do is we put up the walls. And when we put up the walls, those liars you spoke of, the reason why we have liars and we hide behind that layer of social media is because we don't want to give no. We're taught to guard the heart, especially women. I, in, in, yeah, yeah. In defense, of, in defense of women, I said they're liars because they have this, they have this, this social pressure that they have to live up to. Like we got kids. Well, I don't want to get too graphic, but it's just some things that as kids a woman don't. you're taught that you shouldn't want. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the bottom line yeah. is maybe you do. <laughs> and like you know, maybe you do want that. And, or say and, that and date that. Like I feel yeah. like you be know, open about it. Yeah. Um, but they can. I go to church with a lot of women, you mm-hmm. know, and if you're not waiting, then don't pretend you're waiting. Yeah, you're right, right. Waiting. You're girl, you grown. Like, but it's social pressure. It it's so much I'm gonna be, you know, pressure. Yeah. Because what it does is, you know, my small little bucket that I'm trying to <laughs> swim in, you right. gave it up. Right, you right, right. We can go to the same church now. He think that we all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You yeah. Know, Y'all sliding numbers and all that, and I'm ignoring people. Mm-hmm. So right. now I look like some wrong. You know, but it's it's so know. much social pressure on women, and now I'm, I'm playing devil's head. advocate. Now yeah. I just jumped over to the other side. Now the, I said that all mm-hmm. oh, these women are liars, but like yeah. I said, it's so. Do you know the social pressure? Men don't have a. Do men have a name for like whore? Like women call each other hoes, and no, like no, uh, now they're allowed to be 
sexually uh, mm-hmm. awakened. Who, women? Women. Kind of sort of. Body count and all Yeah, kind of sort of, yeah. Or whatever. In my sorta. day. Yeah. You was nasty. Yeah. Yeah, you was nasty. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, he yeah. just threw it all out there, didn't he? Women just... are very vocal now about yeah. everything they do. Sexually, mm-hmm. all kind of stuff. I, mm-hmm. What's that one girl who... Did y'all see that video of the one girl? What's the Don't say it. Don't you know what her name is? This. Suki. No. Don't is, tell Am I saying her name right? Suki? Suki? I was no, honey. She was in Paris. Don't be graphic with it. Listen, we're just gonna say she was she talking was about doing some utterly things disgusting and saying some things out in public. Disgraceful. Right. Um, as a woman, I was just flabbergasted. Like yeah, yeah. I didn't even know women like kind of like carry on say? and treat themselves and act like that. In That's such what a manner. I just said. Yeah, you are literally doing what I just said. Mm-hmm. If a man said those same things. We wouldn't be here. Me like, and do oh say my. those things, though. but we, but me and Jeff wouldn't be here. Like, oh my God, he's disgusting. We, just, <laughs> we probably know, wouldn't even say know, nothing about know. it. But that's the social yeah, pressure that I'm talking that's the about. Pressure because that's the pressure. What you just did, you said it was it was as a woman. Well, that's what these women have to deal with. So that's why they lie. Yes. They say that I'm not. You know, I don't put things like that in my mouth, and I didn't even ask you to, and you just went and did it. <laughs> so, think about, so think about it. So think about like, let's, okay, let's put this into perspective. Let's bring it back. Let's put it into perspective. Okay, so, okay, let's bring it to back to perspective. So listen. did you see the video? Though? Okay. So the thing is this: what, what? Y'all, y'all don't mind yeah, so that. So the thing is this: so you seen is, it? So y'all know exactly what, what he's saying. It what. What he said. Suki, look her up. She yes. was in Paris. She said, I want to mm-hmm. get my coochie. Look, okay, okay, okay. Look, listen. Yeah, well, my show, dang it. My they show. They didn't hear me on. say that. They, you own the mic and we oh, lie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I don't talk like that. <laughs> Yo, I was talking to Kim. I was talking to Kim. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, y'all. We've been live for 51 minutes. Either you want to talk about it or you don't. So, okay, so this is the deal. So this is the deal. Sorry, y'all. All of what he said. Uh, let's bring it down. Let's bring it back. <laughs> what he's saying is, is that when that social pressure, like, what are women taught? You think that's social no, wait, pressure? Is, no, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, on. Because we got, because we got, because wait, look, look, hold on. We went from, we went from, you, didn't you say earlier, ma'am, that women are now being more vocal they about are, how they, they are. are? Wait, hold on, yeah, let yeah, me get it out. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Listen. <laughs> So we being more vocal sexually about things, right? Being more vocal because this is the same thing that men does. Now, to flip it back to what my man said, the social pressure comes from you said she was being nasty. If I heard another man say something about another woman, I'm going to just say, hey, dog, you wilding out. And I'm going to keep it that way. And it's cool but because it's un- yeah. we have it's like a I don't know if it's like a code. Or I think that's just how we wired as it men. Be news. It's, yeah, it ain't news because the thing is, we know that men going to do something. We know that men want to have some. We we can openly admit to our urges, our desires, our thing, and we don't have no shame with it. And when so it come, when we talk love uh, each other differently, like. You got a homie mm-hmm. that may have killed somebody, but you've been knowing him since he was two. He next door, so you mm-hmm. still got his back. You may not see him every day, but that's still your boy. See, y'all got a different call. <laughs> but it, it, well, saying, I can, okay, look, I can different. give you that. I can give you that, but but still, there are some instances though where. What sometimes you got to let that moral code go, and you do have to distance yourself from people. Some people are just not good for you. You know what I mean? So even though the coast, I see men as having sympathy for another man. We can sympathize with you, but if I ain't gonna rock with you, I'm not gonna rock with you. You know, I can say, "Hey, hey, big dog, that's kind of rough," but uh, you know, uh, I might have to yeah. separate from you. But to speak to that social prep, that's why you want to know why women can't be uh feel like they can't express themselves sexually and be out there and vocal about it because of what you just said. You said she was being nasty. I have to say, like, just- Talk to me, Malachi. Expressed, in my opinion, is the right type of social pressure. That yes, to be mm-hmm. and I agree. I mean, and I, to me, we tend to make things as human beings. We tend to make things more complicated than they need to be. Mm-hmm. And part of that complication is what's been spoken of now with the double standard, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, as one who endorses just a straight biblical standard. Mm-hmm. If you're engaging in a certain behavior, whether you're a male or a female, in its promiscuity, you are a whore. Yeah, you so you, that is. You're a male, you're a whore. Yeah. If you're doing it, you're a woman, you're a whore. Yeah, it's, it, it is. should be that simple. But it's yes. not. It's, it's not. right. It's not. it's not because we make it not that simple. Yeah, yeah. We, we want the double standards. Yeah. And also, mm-hmm. we want to pretend that there aren't 
you know, differences that uh, men and women naturally have, right? Speak on it, sir. And so it, it, and that's not to say that that makes it okay for the man to be a whore now. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't make it okay. But when women get this idea that to attain some sort of sense of empowerment, that means that I can be just like a man. I'm mm. like, you're going out of your element. And why would empower why would empowerment be that I'm going to act as disgusting as me? Right. <laughs> yeah. So we just we, we make things just too complicated. Mm-hmm. And this is why people, me and this man, be on the phone for hours and hours <laughs> in, because we talk about stuff like this. And when we have these conversations, it's enlightening. Uh, people in the corner, this is Malachi Moore. Uh, uh, Redirect the focus audience. Please meet Malachi Moore. Thank you. Thank you all for giving the claps. I appreciate this. My audience is now your audience. So, <laughs> so. to piggyback on what Malachi said, mm-hmm. traditionally, we teach that women don't have those urges. What I've come to learn as I've grown older. Keep it real, sister. Don't. Oh, good. we do. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Don't, <laughs> don't shoot it down. They're uncontrollable, but we've always been taught not to talk about. Yeah. Right? What we naturally yeah. go. Yes. Okay. We're just taught not to. Now, talk do you about think? It. Now, do you believe <laughs> that if the con- if the dialogue, we might go over now. We got five minutes, Jesus. <laughs> now, do you believe that? Then, do you believe that the dialogue needs to change then? If I it was not. more socially acceptable to, and I'm not saying socially acceptable to put your business out there, but if it was more socially acceptable in the home to discuss these things and to teach kids and to teach teenagers, have the conversation, know yourself, know who you are, but keep those things private. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, you feel what I'm saying? Or just if don't the, say it. Or, or just don't say it. But if the dynamic changes in the home, do you believe it's better to have that conversation? For me, in my house. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a house where we talked about everything. Okay. I raised my kids in the house. We talk about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so the culture in my home, we discuss everything, good or bad. Mm-hmm. Now, from a biblical standpoint, I yeah. encourage abstinence. If it does not happen, I then educate them so that they can protect themselves. There you go. In what endeavor they've chosen, mm-hmm. I explain the consequences yes. mm-hmm. and why I think they should wait. Mm-hmm. Inevitably, the decision is theirs, and I give it to them. But my belief and my children understand my belief is all biblical. Okay, my standpoint now, and at any point, you can make a bad decision. Mm-hmm. You can come back from that bad decision and still try to get back. Um, mm. On track, and that's what I teach, and that's what okay. I believe. Um, but yeah, I know that some people don't acknowledge mm-hmm. certain things about women. We've been taught to yeah. to package it so neatly as if we don't struggle. Sugar, we and spice, and everything. Nice. We, 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 mm-hmm. we do. We've been taught to contain it, yes. or we've been taught to keep it under wraps. We don't yes. talk to one another yeah. about mm-hmm. it. Nobody told me that you know, actually, because something might happen in your thirties. Get prepared, mm-hmm. you might go through some. No one taught me to expect this big change. And when I went through it, mm-hmm. I'm like calling people because yeah, I have I feel older you. friends. I'm like, yep. why nobody told me that there's this sexual awakening that mm-hmm. happens again? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. it might happen again yeah. in my court. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm going to need some extra yeah. prayer. I was, to t- <laughs> you I, was talking, yeah. you I was talking to a woman and she said that uh that uh she I guess women in their forties kind of feel like men in their twenties and I like it's it's like men in their twenties is you know as as a man near his forty he starts slowing down a little bit. Well once excited me, don't you know, it still excites me, don't get me wrong, but not like it's controllable now. But women in their as they approach I think it's probably forties, it's maybe like mid thirties to to forties. But you kind of, yeah, it's flip flop, man. Fly. Life is a mug, bro. Like when you, when you, when you that young and you vibrant and you don't even have the urge like that, and then all of a mm-hmm. sudden you turn forty, now you feel like a twenty year old boy, and that's how I used to feel when I was twenty. Now it's like we're not even matching. <laughs> it's like your forty year old okay. man they ain't really trying to. Uh, I, I, I do believe a fifty year old male and a fifty year old female are in two completely opposite. Yeah. Of the spectrum. Yeah. You mm. all turn into couch potatoes. Yeah, she you are to, not performing yeah. up to snuff. <laughs> <laughs> we just got our second win. Right. Come on, man. Right. I'm just saying. <laughs> trying to get our groove back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not 
These are all these are, uh, again. These are generalizations. Yeah, these are generalizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Hold on, let's shut it down. Hold on, hold on. All right, look. We, I have 10 oh, seconds. I'm going to shut this down and we are going to continue the conversation. Okay, so y'all, this is boy Life Coach Jeff coming to you live with the Redirect Group Focus Podcast. We thank you for watching and we thank this beautiful audience that we have had here today and Miss Jennifer Williams for the networking event that she put on. And we thank these crazy people for uh, denying her the right to go ahead and be outside. It's raining anyway. But we got a sweet, y'all. We got a sweet. So we're going to enjoy this sweet. So I'm going to play the outro. And remember, this is Redirect Group Refocus, your boy Life Coach Jeff. Peace out. Peace. Thank you for listening and tuning in to the Redirect Group Refocus podcast. We do thank you and appreciate and value you as a listener. Now, uh, I would like to just throw in, please follow us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram as Redirect, Regroup, Refocus, and also Life Coach Jeff Relliford. You can also find me on Facebook as Jeff Relliford. That's my personal page. Go ahead, give me a follow there. I always put up some good inspirational content. And also the business page, Redirect, Regroup, Refocus on Facebook as well. So, all right, you all, thank you for tuning in. And next week, we will be here again. Remember, Redirect, Regroup, Refocus. I love y'all. Peace out.